Knowing the most optimal smoke lineups in CSGO isn't just useful for rising in the ranks. It is mandatory. If aiming isn't your strong suit, smoke lineups can help give you the edge you might need in a firefight. And even if your aim is cracked, smokes are still going to help you level up your gameplay, if you know how to use them. For those reasons, and because I am super sick of losing ELO, we are going to show you the most important smoke on each map in the active duty map pool in CSGO. But before we get into it, I need to mention that these lineups are all on 128 tick servers, and that for most of them, you will need a jump bind. So please, copy the command in our description and either enter it into your CSGO console, or create an auto exec, paste it in there, and give them a try. And now we learn what I think are the seven most important smokes in CSGO. Love it or hate it, Mirage is one of the most important maps in CSGO. It has served as the proving ground for a laundry list of strats at the pro level, and it's a pivotal map for those looking to learn the fundamentals of competitive play. That's actually a really nice smoke going towards <laughs> B, that's going to be a little bit nuts for them. They're going to be giving that call, the smoke towards B, and he's going to be going back towards Palace, and you can see that's actually working. Look oh at the CTs peeling God. away now. AZ's for better of it, he knows what he's doing, and there it is! That kill from Carrigan really makes this interesting now. As a result, there are a million smokes to choose from, but the one we landed on was, of course, the mid-window smoke. From T-spawn, find this trash can, nestle yourself next to it, and then put your crosshair dead center in the middle of this sort of square panel thing in the top right. Then, this is the crucial part, you need to hold D so you strafe right into the trash can and then jump bind. This smoke is crucial for a few reasons, but the most important one is this. The CTs will almost always be able to get to the window before you can peek top mid. Tossing the smoke allows you to take control of top mid and opens your options both to cat and connector without getting obliterated by a lone CT waiting for you to turn the corner with an op. And, just because I'm a nice guy, and equally sick of losing ELO in matchmaking, I'll show you the 64 tick lineup to boot. From T-spawn, find the exact same trash can, walk up next to it in the exact same spot, but this time I want you to crouch and put your crosshair on the top of this balcony railing thing. Then, whilst crouching, walk forward and release your jump bind as soon as your crosshair hits the bottom of the railing. Overpass is arguably the largest, most open map in the competitive pool, so knowing some utility to cut off sight lines is really going to help you manage its scale. And if we can suggest absolutely one must-know smoke going into your next face it pug, it's the monster smoke. In CT spawn, head over to this dumpster, crouch, then simply look over to the end of this post on the telephone pole. Then, whilst crouching, jump throw. Throwing smoke. This smoke is going to land on the T's side of monster, which can do a few things for you. Generally, this smoke is going to force the T's hand. It's going to make it so that if they want to have a sight line through monster, they have to push it and thus push the smoke. On top of that, it will provide an obstacle to the T's as they try to execute the most common rush on the map. And if they decide to disrespect the smoke anyway, a single anchor can easily shut them down. They've gone for Tech Nine Armor instead, so seeing if they can make that work. The spray down Shroud, picking up a triple, making it a quad, and going for the ace. He's blind, he can't see a thing. And on the other side, Slemmy there to cancel it out, but still great defense. Ancient has been in the competitive map pool for over a year now, and if we have learned anything, it's that it's pretty CT sided. Trying to take control of either site as a T can be a suicide mission due to how easy it is for CTs to lock down entry points. So it's really helpful to have at least some mid presence for as many rounds as you can manage. And that's why knowing how to smoke off house is a necessity. Now, there's a few ways to do this, but this one is my favorite. From T-Spawn, line yourself up with the corner edge of this pillar, then look to where these two bricks meet on this massive gate. Jump throw, Bob's your uncle. 
Similar to Mirage Window, it's really hard to take mid control if there is a single CT perched up in house. That's why smoking it off is so important, because it'll force them either to push the smoke and take a fair fight or play donut, which is easier to manage because you can take that fight at your leisure. And if you try taking a site without that mid presence, it can sometimes go pretty poorly. It always feels like a little more pressure than it actually does. If someone's close to the smoke like that, they normally don't get blinded and can go on to a bit of a multi-kill. Now, fast A play, Ooh. saves here with the AWP. They uh -oh. are running him down. These pistols, oh, he's throwing the AWP out of there. <laughs> he's like, you ain't getting this. You gotta go into the open, wow. into case Zerato if you wanna get that AWP back. He's looking. <laughs> they can't find it, they can't figure it out. Up next is Vertigoat. Now, as much as some people despise this map, I love it. And it has undeniably been a solid fixture in the competitive map pool for three years now. So suck it up, play it, and for your own damn sake, at least learn this one damn smoke. Now, as many of you are probably aware, Vertigo is widely considered to be a rush A simulator, especially at higher ranks, where mid and B can become very difficult for T's to take. For that reason, T's will be trying to take at least some form of ramp control on most full buys, which is why we're gonna teach you how to smoke it off when defending. Walk out of spawn towards elevator and turn left to see this yellow scaffold. Squeeze tight into the corner of the scaffold and the wall, and then look over to this steel buttress. Aim the top of your crosshair so that it lines up with this first section of the metal. This one might take some practice. As you run forward, you need to move slightly to the right to clear the wall, but then slam yourself back into it and toss the smoke as soon as your crosshair clears the last ceiling panel. The smoke will land at the T entrance of ramp, and it will allow CTs to take more aggressive positions to defend A rather than just sitting at sandbags and side halls. Side note, don't forget to spam the hell out of the smoke, especially with an A1S, because the return on investment can be pretty substantial. Apex, don't be too obvious with it, okay? And Apex is like, I won't. And then this is what he's doing. <laughs> Nuke is a fantastic map but it can be an absolute nightmare to navigate if you don't use proper utility. And this is especially true when you're trying to take outside control as a T. Now, there's more than one smoke required for this take. So if you want to be as efficient as possible, maybe timestamp this video and disseminate it to the people in your stack who refuse to learn them. The first smoke can be thrown directly from spawn. Walk up to the back of the truck and center yourself on the left edge of the bed. Line up your crosshair with the outside corner of this window and jump throw. Now, as you can probably tell, this is only gonna cover half of the secret cross. For the other half, another player will have to toss a smoke from this telephone pole. Squeeze yourself into the corner and then look at this blue crate. Line up your crosshair between that rivet and the bevel and jump throw. Along with flashes, a third player can also bank a smoke off the fence while running, which will provide a cross smoke to get to red. As mentioned, taking outside control on nuke is extremely important, and getting into secret safely is going to give you even more of the map to work with. Before you know it, you'll be planting on B, and the CTs will be forced to attempt a very painful retake. 10 seconds left on the clock, he's going to prioritize plant, they're looking down, swarming all around him. He gets himself into a little bit of cover too! Zaiwu! No way! The headshot is! Next up is Inferno. And if you know anything about me, you know that I despise this map. It is a claustrophobic hellscape where the T's have nowhere to move, get berated by utility wherever they do move, and are forced into what I think is an outdated telegraphed and execute heavy playstyle. So if you want to have any semblance of fun on this map, you need to know the smokes. And listen, more than any other map in the active duty pool, there are a ton of smokes to choose from. It actually took me a while to decide on which one we were gonna do, but I settled on the moto smoke. To throw this smoke, you first need to safely make it up to top mid. Once you do, line yourself up tight with the corner of this wall. Then line your crosshair up with the edge of this flower pot and throw. This one is actually not a jump throw. It also works on 64 tick. As I mentioned, there are countless important smokes to learn on this map. 
but Moto gets the edge in my opinion, since it has multiple uses. For starters, it can help you set up for a cheeky Arches to be hit, or at the very least, it can allow a player to lurk around library and maybe pick off a rotate. But perhaps most importantly, it will cut off the CT's main path for retaking a site. And that can lead to some amazing post-plant situations. Bemis, oh! oh, he hits another VP dilapidated James motivated to come up clutch with four of his own surely not Jame to save VP looking for it is Acor oh, and Jame oh. pulls off the 1v5 Last but not least is the newest addition to CSGO's competitive map pool, Anubis. Seeing that this map is so new, I'm pretty sure that there are gonna be countless smokes that prove to be crucial once we start seeing it in pro play. You kinda have to go through this if you're OG. Or you just, I guess, save and do it again in the next? Yeah, you have to save. Oh, that's uh, That's so No awkward. one wanted to make this cool. No. <laughs> <laughs> Stalled out by a single smoke. But I currently have more matches played in matchmaking on this map than any other. Seriously, even more than Mirage. So what I'm gonna go with is the mid smoke from CT spawn. Turn around and walk up to this broken arch and tuck yourself in. Then look over to where this foliage is and aim your crosshair where the top of these two walls meet. Finally, look up until you are right on the edge of this part of the cloud and jump through. Now, throwing the T side version of the smoke is almost as important since it will let you take drop control and get into water safely. However, that's also what makes the CT smoke so important. T's already have a pretty easy way of getting canal control, so smoking off mid is just gonna take away one more headache for your defense. Okay, those are, in my opinion, seven of the most important smokes in CSGO. Obviously, there are tons more super simple and somewhat complicated ones that you can learn, but for the average new-ish player who's just trying to get their bearings in CSGO, these are a great place to start. Let us know in the comments how these smokes worked for you, which ones you thought we should have included instead, and if you think that we should be making other content like this for either other forms of utility or other esports altogether. See you next time. To throw the smoke, first you need to safely make it up to top mid. <laughs> Get, getting out mid on Inferno. God. <laughs>